Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your humble host, Bill Miller. Welcome to the third installment of our Top 100 Pre-Code War Comics. Pre-Code War Comics are collected for many reasons. Some collectors enjoy reading the stories and some enjoy the interior art. But the majority of Pre-Code War Comics are collected for their cover. The most popular covers are ones that feature bayonet attacks, bazookas, atomic explosions, and of course, flamethrowers. A hard and fast rule to determine which covers are most coveted would be the same rule that applies to pre-code horror and crime comics. The more gruesome the cover, the more sought after it will be. Now, a quick reminder of the criteria. The comics had to have been published prior to carrying the Comics Code Authority seal and the title had to be primarily a war title. This means no superhero comics produced during World War II. Some of the eligible titles were adventure titles, but they switched to a war context during the Korean War. Lastly, these are not necessarily either the most popular or the more ex most expensive war books. They are simply the best war comic book covers, in my humble opinion. It was even more challenging to rank numbers 60 through 41 than it was to rank the previous two installments. I made a series of five videos with 20 entries in each one, so please join me for the next 20 covers as we count down the top 100 pre-code war comic book covers. Starting off our list at number 60, we have G.I. Joe, issue number 35. Published by Ziff Davis in September of 1954, the cover artist is Clarence Doerr. Now we have a painted cover with good girl art and bondage. What's not to like? At 59, we have All-American Men of War, issue number 4, from DC Comics. This was produced in April of 1953, with the cover art chores by Jerry Grandinetti. And he's certainly in a precarious position in this image. Coming in hot at number 58, we have Warfront. Issue number one from Harvey. This came out in September of 1951. We're not certain of the cover artist, but we think it's Warren Kramer. It's a great fiery cover with a whole lot of detail to take in. At 57, we have Foxhole number three from Mainline. This came out in February of 1955, the great King Kirby with the cover chores. Simple, great colors, and Jack Kirby. At 56, we have Young Men, issue number 19 by Atlas slash Marvel. From February of 1953, the cover artist is Carl Burgos. The contrast in colors on this image is absolutely brilliant. At number 55 on our list, we have American Air Forces, issue number 8, from Magazine Enterprises, produced in October of 1952. Cover art by Bob Powell. And I love the perspective of this image from behind the door gunner. Coming in hot at number 54, we have Man Comics, number 23, from Atlas slash Marvel. Produced in February of 1953, the cover artist is Fred Keita. And we have a fantastic sword versus knife battle in the foreground 
of this image. At 53, we have Battle, issue number 35, from Atlas slash Marvel, produced in December of 1954, the great Russ Heath with the cover chores. And this is another in a long line of great flamethrower covers. At number 52, War Battles, number seven, from Harvey. This was produced in September of 1952. Lee Elias is the cover artist. Wonderful detail in the background and another beautiful cover by the legendary Lee Elias. At 51, we have War Adventures number five from Atlas slash Marvel, published in June of 1952. Again, Russ Heath with the cover duties. And this is yet another great bayonet battle on this cover. At our half century mark, number 50, we have This Is War, number 9, from Standard Comics, produced in May of 1953. The cover details are by Rocco Mastroserio. This is just a beautiful image and a gruesome bloody head wound on the cover. At 49, Spy Cases, issue number 10, from Atlas slash Marvel, published in April of 1952. The cover art is by Joe Manili. And my favorite part of this is being able to peek at the underground tunnel. It's just fantastic. Number 48, War Comics, issue 31 from Atlas slash Marvel in January of 1955. This is a Russ Heath cover, and the Russ Heath art on this cover is next level. At number 47, we have Horrors of War, issue number 12, published by Star Publications in April of 1953. The cover is by the master, L.B. Cole. He was a master artist in many genres, specifically pre-code horror, but he did jungle, romance, war, anything he touched was very distinctive and beautifully rendered. At 46, we have Man Comics number 21 from Atlas slash Marvel, published in December of 1952. The cover artist is Robert Q. Sale. And this image contains a brutal bayonet to the face on the cover. At 45, we have Battlefield number six from Atlas slash Marvel, again from December of 1952, except this time the cover artist is Russ Heath. And what can I say other than this is just a beautifully rendered flamethrower cover. Coming in on fire at number 44, we have Battlefront, issue number 21 from Atlas slash Marvel, produced in July of 1954. Chuck Miller with the cover art. 
And I love the juxtaposition of the red foreground and the yellow background on this cover. Besides, with a name like Miller, you can't go wrong. At 43, we have Battle Stories, issue number 8, from Fawcett, produced in March of 1953. And unfortunately, the cover artist is unknown. But the red background really accentuates the action that's going on in the foreground of this cover. Absolutely breathtaking. At 42, we have War Adventures number 13 from Atlas slash Marvel. This came out in February of 1953. Russ Heath is the cover artist. And this is a rare and wonderful knife throwing cover. Absolutely incredible. And rounding out our list for today at number 41, we have Men in Action, issue number two, from Atlas slash Marvel. Published in May of 1952, the cover artist is Carl Burgos. I love how dark and gritty yet colorful this cover is. It's just a joy to look at. And that will do it for entries 60 to 41 as we count down the top 100 pre-code war comics. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got to see some books you either haven't seen before or haven't seen in quite some time. Please leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. Do I have some ranked too high or too low? Were there some that shouldn't have made the list at all? I'd love to hear your feedback and don't forget to join me for the next installment as we count down numbers 40 through 21.